Purposely. Your life, God's purpose. Listen at Purposely.com. What do you think about when I say the word shadows? Maybe you think of Peter Pan and his famous shadow. That one was always causing mischief, wasn't it? Or maybe you think about a dark alley and shadowy figures. Or maybe for you, you see a kid jumping rope in the sunshine and the pigtails swinging in the shadow. Well, welcome to the Bible for Busy People. Today, we're going to talk about shadows. What does the Bible have to say about this interesting topic? I'm Erica, your host, by the way, and this is going to be like a one-day walking tour. It's all we have time for this week because I've got big plans for us for the rest of our week together. But for today, stick with me just like a job shadow would stick with you. Have you ever had a job shadow? A kid in high school or in college, they come to your office and they shadow you. They're standing right beside you, watching over everything you do, taking notes, soaking it in. Think about God who says he is the shade at your right hand. Remember we talked about this last week? He is right beside you. And he wants you to know that today, whatever you are going through, he is with you, close, shadowing you, enveloping you in his presence. It's so beautiful to continue to ponder that. So with that, let's begin today in Acts chapter 5, beginning in verse 12. The apostles were performing many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. Note here, this is after Jesus died for our sins and rose from the dead. And all the believers were meeting regularly at the temple in the area known as Solomon's Colonnade, but no one else dared to join them, even though all the people had high regard for them. Yet more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord, crowds of both men and women. As a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought out onto the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. Crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits, and they were all healed. Now, was it Peter's shadow that was falling on people and healing them? Possibly. But guess what? What have we learned? We have learned that God is the shade at our right hand. Jesus was close beside Peter, one of his closest friends and followers here on this earth, even after Jesus rose from the dead. He wasn't walking the earth anymore. At this point, he had sent the Holy Spirit, right, who was with Peter and every other believer who had accepted Jesus. And the same Holy Spirit is with us. By the way, apostle, if you're wondering, just means sent. So here is Jesus sending out his people, his followers to heal sicknesses and cast out demons. But again, God was there. He was the shade at Peter's right hand when he was doing the healing. And he is the shade at your right hand today. Join me now in James chapter 1, verse 17. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God, our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. God is always right by your side. And finally, in the comfort category today, I want you to join me in Psalm 23, verse 4. I bet you've heard this before. We're going King James for a hot second here. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Oh my goodness. Who is thou? That would be the Lord. Even when you someday walk through the valley of the shadow of death, when your time here on earth has come to a close, even then the Lord himself will be with you, the shade at your right hand. And your last breath on earth, if you believe in Jesus, is your first breath of heaven's air. 
And I want to remind you, you can't earn your way to heaven, my friend. You get in on Jesus' score. And on that note, that's where we're going to wrap things up today because this is why people would sacrifice animals in Old Testament times as payment, quote unquote, for their sins. That's why Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, came. The word shadow in the Bible is also a clue. Buckle up. We got to go fast here. Beginning in verse 1. The old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow, a dim preview of the good things to come, not the good things themselves. The sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again, year after year, but they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. If they could have provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped for the worshipers would have been purified once for all time, and their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. But instead, those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins year after year. For it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. That is why when Christ came into the world, he said to God, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings, but you have given me a body to offer. You were not pleased with burnt offerings or other offerings for sin. Then I said, look, I have come to do your will, O God, as is written about me in the scriptures. Skipping down to verse 10 for the sake of time now. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Under the old covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sins. But our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins good for all time. Skipping down now to verse 14, for by that one offering, he forever made perfect those who are being made holy. Oh, my friend, I want you to know there is not enough good you can do in this world to earn your way to heaven. You get in on his score. You say out loud that you believe in Jesus Christ, that he died and rose again for you. You accept his free gift of forgiveness and love, and you receive peace now and eternal life. You get in on Jesus's score. He's the only one whose sacrifice counts once and for all, and he is with you, the shade at your right hand. Until next time, you are really loved. Thank you for making time for the Bible for Busy People today. If being part of this community is a blessing to you, it's super easy to share this podcast with someone you love. We're all about spreading the hope of Jesus like butter. So if you've got a moment to write a review, boy, we'd really appreciate that. Maybe you need a little prayer today or you're ready to take that next step with God. I invite you to check out our show notes. You're going to find lots of encouragement there. This podcast is one branch on a tree called Purposely, a podcast network designed with practical podcasts to help you find and thrive in God's purpose for your life. If you've got a pulse, you've got a purpose.